What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the all new B-Link GTR9 Pro. Now this thing is absolutely insane. It's powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. And since we've got that Max Plus 395, this is also packing the most powerful iGPU on the market, the Radeon 8060S. B-Link has done some really interesting things with this new PC, and of course, it kind of resembles another pro desktop on the market from another company. I've always been a big fan of that design, and I think this looks really nice the way it is. The chassis is constructed of aluminum. It's got a dual stereo speaker system built in that actually puts out some bass, and it's got its own 230 watt power supply built into the PC, so we don't have a brick hanging off of this thing when it's plugged into the wall. In this video, I've got a lot to go over and a lot to test, so before we get into it, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. On October 14th, 2025, Microsoft is gonna be discontinuing support for Windows 10 Home and Windows 10 Pro, but that doesn't mean we can't run Windows 10. What I'm talking about here is Windows 10 LTSC, and a price for one of those keys is a bit high from Microsoft's website, but luckily, VIP CD key does have some cheap Windows 10 LTSC keys. So this is actually really awesome, and with this version of Windows 10, if you're used to using Windows 10, you don't have to worry about a UI change, and there's no bloat with this version. Up to 10 years of security updates, so up until 2032, no pre-installed bloat like the Microsoft Store, Cortana, OneDrive. Of course, you could always install those if you want to. And this is only $11 when you use code ETA at checkout from VIP URCD key. So we'll just go ahead and add it to the cart. Once we're over here, We'll use code ETA. That's gonna bring the price down to 1101. We'll submit the order, they'll email us the key, and now we can activate Windows 10 LTSC. Getting it set up is pretty easy. There's a few places to download it, but I use Internet Archive. So we've got Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSC. We'll download the iOS image. Once this is downloaded, we can use an application known as Rufus to flash our USB drive. We'll install Windows 10 LTSC and activate with that key from VIP CD keys. But let's just say you want to upgrade to Windows 11 Pro. That's fine, it's easy enough to do, and it's pretty cheap also. Use code ETA at checkout for 25% off. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. Again, they're going to email you that key, and now you can activate Windows 11. As you can see, we're running Windows 11, and from settings, we're gonna go to activation settings. It's gonna tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed, so we're just gonna paste it right in here, choose next. It's gonna activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description, and remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Moving back over to the B-Link GTR9 Pro, inside of the box, you'll get a power cable and an HDMI cable, plus some documentation. When it comes to I.O. up front here, we've got a power button that dubs as a fingerprint sensor for easy login, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full-size SD 4.0 card slot, and a USB Type-C port. Moving around back, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, dual 10 gigabit LAN ports, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, two USB 4 ports, and another 3.5mm audio jack. I was really interested in checking out the internals here, and it's actually pretty simple to get this off uh, to upgrade the storage. That's about all we're going to be able to upgrade here. There's four screws, and once you pop this off, just be careful with it because there is one ribbon cable that we need to remove. And that cable goes right over to the dual stereo speaker system that B-Link has added here. Again, I mean, this thing actually gets pretty loud, puts out some bass, and you get away with just using this if you wanted to. And we can upgrade the storage in this thing pretty easily. I've already taken the screws out of the heatsink. This came with a 2 terabyte PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD, but we've got another slot here, so you can add two of those if you needed to. And I'll tell you what, in the last two years, B-Link has really stepped up their game when it comes to their mini PCs. I mean, build quality here is top notch, and the cooling system they have is something that we haven't seen in a mini PC before. Since the heatsink itself is so heavy, it's got its own bracket system, huge vapor chamber, two blower style cooling fans. You've got your heat fins here. And right on the bottom, once everything's attached, there's actually another aluminum heat sink. Plus we've got that cooler for the M.2 drives. And over on their website, they state that the Max Plus 395 in this in performance mode can do up to 140 watts. 
meaning we'll be able to sustain those higher clocks on the CPU and GPU with this thing for sure. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs here, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 up to 140 watts in this. We've got 16 cores, 32 threads, base clock of 3 gigahertz, boost up to 5.1. Radeon 8060S iGPU based on RDNA 3.5 with 40 compute units, 128 gigabytes of RAM running at 8,000 megatransfers per second, two M.2 2280 slots. We can do up to four terabytes each, giving us a total of eight terabytes of PCIe 4.0 M.2 storage. It's got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11. But of course, with something like this, we could install Linux on it if we wanted. First things first, I wanted to give you a look at the BIOS because there's at least one setting that you may want to change in here. And that's pretty simple to get to, but I did find something else that really piqued my interest. In an earlier mini PC from B-Link powered by the HX370, we had some overclocking on the GPU and CPU. With this, we've actually got the same thing. So that's really interesting. But uh, in order to get to uh, performance mode, main, advanced, AMD CBS, SMU common options, and right there at the top, we'll go to performance mode. Looks like balance mode is around 120 watts, and that's more than enough, but if you just want that little extra, performance mode will take us up to that 140 watt TDP, which does make a bit of a difference. Now that we've got that set, I wanted to show you the overclocking section, and I'm not going to do any of it in this video, but I'll have a dedicated video because I do think we can pull a little better performance out of this. AMD overclocking, obviously it's going to give you a little bit of a warning. Precision boost overdrive, and we can set this to advanced. From here, we can change the PVO limits. CPU boost clock override, so we can go positive or negative, so we can get a little more. And we've also got the GPU boost clock override. With the HX370, we were able to overclock by about 300 megahertz on the GPU, and it did make a difference. So I think here we're going to try a little bit of CPU and GPU overclocking in my next video. So keep an eye out for that. But main thing here was that performance mode. We're there now. Save, exit, get right into Windows. Getting in here to Windows, and uh, one thing I didn't change from the BIOS was the VRAM amount. With this system, since we've got 128 gigs, we can actually go up to 96 gigs of VRAM, and that's how it was set up out of the box. If you're going to be using this for AI, I mean, that definitely makes sense. Usually, if I'm just using it as a regular PC or for gaming, I go to 32. But as you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI Max 395, 16 cores, 32 threads, 32 gigs of RAM dedicated to the system. And of course, we've got that Radeon 8060 Si GPU with 96 gigs of VRAM, which is absolutely insane for an iGPU. But since we're in performance mode, I did want to show you here, we can do up to 140 watts and the cooling system is amazing on this thing. I have not heard this thing boost up very high at all in performance mode and that fan curve is changed a bit. It's a very quiet system the way it is. But if we go over here to CPU-Z and stress the CPU out, right down here, you'll see it jump up real close to 140. Once we put a load on the iGPU, it does hit 140. And we can actually make it do a little more by using a third-party application. But I think this is plenty right now. And the cooling system on this thing is awesome. So uh, even at 140 watts, I've got the CPU temps listed here. I could let this run for a long time. And this system is not getting hot. It's not getting loud. Again, that fan curve is changed in performance mode. Does kick up a bit more, but you kind of got to get close to it to even hear it. The cooling system that B-Link used here is really great for a PC like this, for sure. Now, I want to take a look at some benchmarks that I ran on this thing. And first up, we've got Geekbench 6 for some uh, CPU performance. Single core coming in with a 2,733, multi 21,997. Recently, I tested a pre-built PC with the 9800X3D, and we could probably see better performance out of something like that with some tuning. But that gave us a single core of 3,270, multi-17,505. One big thing to keep in mind here is that 9800X3D is a full-fledged desktop chip. This is a mobile chip that we're working with here. Next benchmark I ran was Cinebench R24. And uh, for single core, we're at 106 here. 
you can see that it is getting beat out by the Apple M1 Max and the M1 Ultra. But when it comes to multi-core performance, this thing's on top of the list with a 1,912. Checking out some iGPU benchmarks with 3DMark, we've got Steel Nomad, 2,182, and we got an FPS of 21.83. And the final one we have here is Time Spy coming in with a really impressive 11,233. This is really what makes it most powerful iGPU on the market. This is on par with something like an RTX 4060 laptop or even an RX 7600 non-XT desktop GPU. Now it's time to take a look at some real world game performance and here we have Cyberpunk 2077 1440p Ultra with FSR set to quality. That's just the Ultra preset here. Up in the top left hand corner we've got Afterburner running and you can see our TDP at the very bottom. This is going to be our combined GPU and CPU performance. Uh, really I can't separate it because it's all together in that APU. 137 up to 140 watts here. CPU temps are awesome on this little setup, and in some cases you'll see it dip down into the high 60s. Obviously, with a little more FSR, taking it to balance, we'll get more out of it. But one thing that you can do here is use frame gen, and there's people who just don't like it, but I love frame gen because of this. 1440p, ultra, with no FSR scaling, but we're using FSR frame gen over 100 FPS on average, and I mean, it feels super smooth like this. Even while driving, I mean, you'll notice if you've ever tested this on a lower end GPU, getting into the car, getting up to speed, that FPS falls down, but with Brain Gen on, we don't have to worry about it on this system at all. The next game I wanted to test was Borderlands 4, and you know, there's been some issues with performance on this game with basically everything right now. We're at 1440p, I had to drop it down to medium, but we've got FSR set to quality, and we're right there on the edge of 60, so it's getting on up there. Haven't really seen it dip under, but I do think with more optimizations down the road from the developers, we'll see better performance, or of course, you could always drop it down to 1080. Checking out the built-in benchmark for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 1440p Ultra preset, and I do think that this does introduce a little bit of FSR. It might be set to balanced here, but by the end, we had an average of 139 FPS. And yeah, with that preset, at least on this system, FSR 3.0 does go to balanced. And the last game I wanted to test here was Doom the Dark Ages. And I had to show you the settings because uh, we're seeing some great performance out of this. I know there's been some optimization since this game was released, but right now we're at 1440p Ultra with FSR set to balanced, and we've got more than enough RAM for this, but I did go back and restart the game because the FPS seemed a bit high, but as you saw, I mean, with those settings there, we're getting over 90 FPS on average with this game at 1440p Ultra on this iGPU. The last thing I wanted to mention here were CPU temps. And remember, I mean, this is an APU, so we've got the GPU and CPU combined here. This thing does not get loud whatsoever, even at that performance mode, 140 watts. While testing in performance mode, 1440p gaming, our average across the board was only 56 degrees Celsius. And running Cinebench R24 for 10 minutes, which maxes out all 16 cores, 32 threads, the highest this thing hit was only 73 degrees Celsius. So yeah, you could run this thing continuously and not worry about it overheating, even in performance mode. So overall, really liking the look and the performance we're getting out of the B-Link GTR 9 Pro. It's not a budget PC by any means. I mean, these things are quite expensive because we've got that Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. Checking prices online, I mean, you'll see these things can get way up there. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a compact machine that can run Windows really well, get some AI tasks done on it, use it as a full-fledged desktop or even game, this is going to be a really great choice for you. But again, I will have another video coming up. I want to spend a little more time with this. I want to get some overclocking on the GPU and CPU out of the way. I would also like to run something like SteamOS. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button. Think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And like always, thanks for watching.